For many, space has always been seen as the final frontier, a place visited by the chosen few, out of reach to all but a handful, many of whom return profoundly changed by the extraordinary experience. Now, this is about to change. Travel in space is about to become a reality, not in 40, 30 or 20 years, but in about four years, not just for the chosen few, but for anyone with the desire to see our world from the heavens. It may seem a fanciful claim, but the technology to send men and women into space affordably and safely already exists. The project name is Ascender, and it's Britain's very first small space shuttle. The Ascender team has already successfully flown a radio-controlled scale prototype of its space plane, and each day brings them closer to the creation of a full-scale prototype. There is a very real opportunity for Britain to lead the way in space flight, but Ascender needs investment to turn the dream into a reality. David Ashford is Managing Director of Bristol Space Planes Limited and the inventor of Ascender. Space travel for the public is going to start very soon indeed. Ascender could be flying to space within four years and carrying passengers to space within seven years. Several American companies have started to develop space planes. The first of these are due to fly this year and some more due to fly next year. And the X-15 rocket-powered research aeroplane showed us all how to do it 40 years ago. It made its first flight in 1959. And that was a rocket-powered aeroplane, air-launched from a big B-52 bomber, and that would fly to space height. And it made 199 flights very successfully over a period of 10 years. Ascender takes off like an ordinary airplane from an ordinary airfield using its two jet engines. And climbs to 30,000 feet using the jet engines. The pilot then switches on the rocket motor, pulls up into a steep climb, and starts accelerating towards space. When it gets to about 40 miles high, the rocket fuel is used up, but it's going upwards quite quickly, so it carries on up, unpowered. Once it starts to leave the atmosphere, the pilot uses the little reaction rocket motors to get into a horizontal attitude so that people get a better view. And it carries on to a peak height of just over 60 miles. And the passengers will be weightless for about two minutes. They'll see the whole of England in one flight. Gravity, meanwhile, starts pulling a sender back down towards the atmosphere. It re-enters the atmosphere in a steep dive, pulls out of the dive, pilot starts the jet engines again and flies back to Zane Airfield and it lands like an ordinary aeroplane. We have an excellent design, a world-class design team, a very competitive business plan. What we need now is the investment. Uh, what we're concentrating on right at the moment is talking to potential investors and industrial partners to make the whole project happen. The UK is in a very good position to take the lead in the imminent space revolution. Bristol Space Planes is actually spearheading that revolution. Technology's got to the stage now where a small startup company can make a useful space plane. Sort of a reinvented X-15, but using technology developed in the last 40 years. And there's no reason why that key, pivotal, mole-breaking step cannot be done by a small company. Once that's been done, and we've shown the, the opportunity, we've demonstrated the opportunities, then the big companies, big business will follow very rapidly. But by that time, we'll have got the lead, we'll have got a good market share, and we'll probably form some sort of teaming arrangement with a big company. David Kent is chief engineer on the Ascender project. This is the a radio controlled model, which we built to check out the low speed handling of the, uh, of the aircraft, of the design. 
And much of this came from the, the shuttle. The data is kind of released by NASA for general consumption. Uh, from the Concorde, data again released, which is pretty useful. A lot, lot of it's very much like a, an ordinary business jet. The nose is, could be off. So an ordinary little four, four six seat business jet. The wings are very much normal construction, metal egg box. Fin is the same. The only real difference is the the tankage, the rocket fuel tanks run from about here to here and weigh something like, with the fuel, something like over half the weight of the aeroplane at takeoff. Rocket engine, very small, sits in something like here. And the rocket engines are all available for little sounding rockets and things that have been made. And the controllery, the little reaction jets, vernier jets, which control the attitude of the rocket in the air, or the aeroplane in the air, in, in space rather, are also available. They were designed for the rockets. And there's far more space to put, the, put them in here, in, the, in, in this aeroplane, than there ever was in, uh, in the rockets. So really, it's a matter of using existing systems and, and technology, and, and just Meccano-wise, fitting them together into a, a, this, this airframe, which isn't really a, a major problem. A sender will be a useful project in its own right, carrying, first of all, scientific experiments to, to space, um, carrying passengers once safety and reliability have been demonstrated. But it's only suborbital. But the key thing about it is it will show that it's possible to make an ordinary aeroplane make several fl flights to space in, in one day. My best estimate is that within 15 years, the cost of a space holiday, a few days in a space hotel, will have come down to about £10,000. That means middle-income people prepared to save for a bit will be able to take holidays in space. And our market research shows that at least a million people will want to do that, and that will need a fleet of uh, 50 space planes. As of now, nearly 400 people have been to space, there have been nearly 400 astronauts. They've nearly all come back saying it was a transforming experience and that's what we're opening up to the general public. Astronauts had endless fun, have endless fun, uh, looking, just looking at the Earth, fantastic views, uh, playing around in microgravity. Now, space hotels will have very large gymnasiums at uh, low gravity and you're able to literally strap wings to your arms and take off like a bird because your arms will be strong enough. So it'll be enormous fun. Space tourism will be the ultimate high. It'll be the ultimate travel advantage for a long time to come anyway. Uh, it'll be a thrilling experience. All we need to make it all happen, and with the UK in the lead, is financial backing. The sender will enable the UK to take the lead in the space flight revolution. The sender is spearheading the space flight revolution. There, there is no reason why the UK can't take the lead in slashing the cost of access to space, uh, replacing ballistic missile type launches with aeroplanes, in slashing the cost of launching satellites, space science, environmental science, and pioneering uh, space tourism.